I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I read for us the watchword for this Sunday from the first letter of Peter, chapter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxiety on God because he cares for you. Yes, in Petrus 5, verse 7, the Wochenspruch, Alle Sorge werft auf Gott, denn er sorgt für euch. You might notice that there is a word printed in full caps lock in large letters. Which one is it? He, of God, er. To make it quite clear that when we throw all our sorrows on the Lord, our anxiety, He is the one that cares for us. As we see in the picture, as we look at nature, how the birds are taken care of, there are clouds and leaves to be seen. We look at all of that through the cross, with the cross, so that our trust reminds us again that God cares for us. When we look at our daily needs, that we do not look at them as things that simply worry us, but things in which we trust in God. He is the creator of heaven and earth, and he not only created, but he creates. He takes care of his creation, and we will hear more about this theme today. Announcements for the service. We follow our regular combined service, which we have followed in the last few Sundays when we have the combined form. As you are aware, some of the forms in the liturgy are spoken. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who makes us aware again that God takes care of us, that when we trust in our Lord Jesus, we see our Father in heaven, indeed the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who provides for us in this life. This same Lord, he bless us in this service. Amen.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us kneel down and confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore speak to you in the stead, and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Hier sind deine Sünden vergeben. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
please follow along as I read the words in German. Alle haben miteinander beklagen, euch mit dem Demut. Denn Gott, wie es geht, den Hochmütigen, aber den Demütigen gibt er Gnade. So demütigt euch nun unter die gewaltige Hand Gottes, damit er euch erhört zu seiner Zeit. Alle eure Sorge werft auf ihn, denn er sorgt für euch. Seid nüchtern und wacht, denn euer Widersacher der Teufel geht umher wie ein grünender Löwe und sucht, wie er verschlinge. Dem widersteht, fest im Glauben und wisst, dass eben dieselben Leiden über eure Brüder und Schwestern in der Welt kommen. Der Gott alle Gnade habe, der euch berufen hat zu seiner ewigen Herrlichkeit in Christus, der wird euch, die ihr eine kleine Zeit leidet, aufrichten, stärken, kräftigen, gründen, die in seine Macht in alle Ewigkeit. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 6.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The words from Holy Scripture for this sermon are from Genesis chapter 2, selected verses. In that day the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground, and a mist was going up from the land, and was watering the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the, the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every plant that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. Let us pray. Lord God, you provide for us. We come to you and pray that you open our eyes for all the good gifts you gift us in our lives. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that we are your stewards, that we acknowledge the daily bread that you give us, and that we turn to you for all the things that we need and honor your Holy name with working your creation. In the name of Jesus we pray, less speaking and hearing. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, human beings look around them. They see nature and there is a very basic relationship between humans and the earth that th surrounds them. The home, if you will, in the universe, our place where we live, we have a close relationship with it. And people in very different ways express their reaction to this relationship, but people are very much aware of it. Aware in such a way that we have hearts for nature. We care for it and we care about what happens to it. Even someone who is quite willy-nilly about nature still knows that he wants to make use of it. So when it goes really badly with the earth, with nature, with the things that are of the earth, then it bothers us. When it gets quite dry, as I'm suspecting it's starting to, there is something that becomes very frustrating to us. Yes, the most obvious thing, obviously, when there's no water, things don't grow. But it goes a little bit more deep. In the fact that we realize that things are lacking. And this isn't just the obvious plant you can see in front of you that's getting a little weak or the dams that get a little lower, but also the other avenues of our life. If we, in a figure of speech, think of the COVID-19 time as a drought in itself, you can see it in the economy, that certain sectors are on severe strain. We human beings are caretakers. We have a role of taking care of things, of making things prosper, and when things get difficult when there is a drought, a lack of rain, then we get frustrated because we're trying to make things grow, to establish our garden, so to speak, or even physically as a farmer who's trying to work for the next crop. And it gets very frustrating because there are many things we can do, but there is a bigger picture we can't control. The part that has to do with this quite a bit is our perception. Our perception that as we take care of something, well, I'm in charge of this. 
And while this is true in a sense, there's a part of it that's a bit dangerous. Because all of a sudden I find myself as in the understanding that something is my creation. It is under my control. It is my property, my farm or my vehicle. It is something that I have ownership of. I steer it. But have you created it out of nothing? No, it is not yours in the fullest sense. You are the caretaker of it, but God gifted it to you. He remains the creator of heaven and earth. At the beginning, yes, he created heavens and the earth, and he also created human beings. But he also very clearly speaks to us today with these words from Holy Scripture, because as we look toward nature, as we look towards dry ground, we are reminded that even when God made the earth, as it says here, there were not yet, no, no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up. Well, even in creation, things were dry and lacking. God caused it to rain. It puts it in this very wonderful phrasing. A mist was going up from the land and was watering the whole face of the ground. God knows it's his creation. We don't need to remind him. He knows. He knows because he created it. And he is still busy taking care of it. And as essential part of his creation, he made human beings. He breathed into the nostrils of the man. He took earth, and out of this earth that we look at, where we say, well, what if there's not enough rain? What will happen if things don't change? Well, God takes that earth and he makes a human being. He breathes his spirit into a human being, and there is that creature, that creature that is created, geschöpft, geschaffen, created by God who makes it. God is this creator of human beings. He breathed life into us. Though we were born of mothers, and conceived with the involvement of a father, God is the one who put this into place. He is the one who gives us our human dignity. When we see a human being and we say it is something important, a life that needs to be protected, especially in categories like abortion where we strongly oppose it, it is because of what God has created what he defends, what he nurtures. That is why he has placed us as the stewards of his creation, the ones who take care of his creation, the ones where it says here, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. The difficulty for us in this is not the caretaking as such, in all our different ways, we like to turn to some form of care. Our difficulty is to truly acknowledge how dependent we are on God. If he doesn't send rain, there's no rain. If he, there is rain to come, he is the one that sends it. If things are going to grow, if things in your business are to prosper, if you are going to get a promotion, you can try what you will. If God does not give it, it will not happen. This is very painful for us because it shows us that we are deluded when we think that we are truly in control. We have freedom in Christ. We have freedom to serve God but we are dependent 
on God forgiving our sins, on God making us known of Him, of God taking care of us in general. We are dependent on Him, and whenever we try to convince ourselves otherwise, we are going to fail, and we are going to, even if our business prospers, we are going to hit a wall at some point. Because we are building our life not around the Creator, but we are trying to see ourselves as Creator. When a drought then comes, whether a real physical one or a figurative one in the business world, even when it's raining, sometimes things really go wrong. Such a drought is a stressor, a stressor that needs to pull us and shake us to remind us of this dependency. In German, we say, Not liet beten. Need teaches prayer. The reason it teaches us prayer is because all of a sudden we are outraged. Because we can try what we will and we see that if God does not bring rain, if God does not shape life in what makes us see the things that support our needs, then we are in despair. We place ourselves in God's place, and then God needs to shake us out of it. We need to be reminded that we are dependent, and when He reminds us, we look up and we realize that we have a providing Father. We realize this because of the work of the Holy Spirit in us, because of Christ that died on us, that lovely picture of the birds and the clouds and the leaves with the cross in the middle. That through Christ, God reveals Himself as the caring Father. We get to know Him, and we pray to Him for our daily bread. He creates He provides, He nurtures. No matter how severe your life can get, no matter if a drought carries on for five years and everything dies, maybe it carries on for 50 years and we starve to death in this country. This life is not about prospering here. That's not the essential goodness that God provides. He knows what is good and sufficient for us. That is why He places our faith front and center. His kingdom, which He establishes for us, that we are satisfied. Because even if businesses go under, even when homes are lost and things are destroyed, God is there. It gets harder to see him as the providing father, but that is why he has given us Jesus, so that this created human being that God has placed in the garden to take care of it is in relationship with his creator the way he is supposed to be. Sin has disturbed this relationship, but when restored through God's help, we are satisfied human beings. At peace, Very often we come across this phrasing that someone who has very little is happy. I think they're not necessarily happy every day, but we have a certain inkling of peace. A tiny little home, maybe close to a tiny little river, and nature rises up around it, and somehow this tiny little family is happy. We can get wrong when we try to build this dream, but I think it reflects of the fact that when peace is instilled into a human soul, then he is is content because he has enough. He doesn't need a castle. He doesn't need 20 businesses. What he needs is peace. When he is in peace with his creator, then he is right with his maker, and with creation. Then he can go out and being forgiven 
the righteous man serves his maker. As stewards of God's church, we are reminded that we are totally dependent on God, and that is good news, because He loves us. And when we ask Him for rain, we shouldn't look and say, "Eh, God, don't you have a clue? It needs to rain. He knows that already. It is important that we take it out of His hand in the way that He knows is best. Because he is placing you in a garden that you take care of the basic things that are under your responsibility. And then he will guide you. Through the forgiveness of Jesus, God guides you and he shows you how to serve him. He, your maker, takes care of you. And having placed you in the place of your service, he gives you all that you need for your body and life. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. O Lord God Almighty, your power and glory are great indeed, yet you have revealed them chiefly through the humble service of your Son, who became our servant even to death on the cross for our redemption. Teach us such humbleness of heart that we may seek the greatness that comes from being servant of all. O Lord, continue to be present with your church and to bless all who serve her. Bless our bishop, all pastors and missionaries, and those preparing for full-time service to your church as pastors and missionaries. Bring peace and harmony to your church and this congregation, that together we may do the work you have called us to do with joy. O Lord, bless the nations with peace. Bless all people with leaders who respect the rule of law, who protect the weakest among us, who execute justice with mercy, and who work for the common good. Be with our president, our premier, and all public servants. O Lord, you created us to live in the bonds of family. Bless all husbands and wives, parents and children, single and widowed, that our homes may be places of blessing, faith, and love in Christ. We pray especially for those not yet born. Guard their fragile lives and support all women during pregnancy and childbirth. O Lord, 
All our needs are known to you, both of body and soul. We pray, we pray you to grant healing, relief, and peace to all the sick and those who suffer. Let all who cry to you in need find mercy and peace to support them in their time of trouble. O Lord, grant peace to those whose hearts and minds are filled with anxiety and turmoil. Give hope to those who battle with depression and sustain those with mental illness. Help us all to know the full consolation of your love, especially when we are overcome with anxiety and despair. You provide for all the needs we have in life. Make this clear to us. When we look into our lives and we see drought, when we see emptiness, that through the cross and your, your atonement of our sinful lives, that you restore your relationship with us, that we come to know you as our loving Father, and that we see your goodness and trust in you. O oh Lord, none of us is worthy of your grace. Yet in, yet in love you invite us to sit at the table of our Lord and receive the gift of heavenly food and the bread which is Christ's body and the cup of his blood. Make us ready to receive him who comes to us here and grant us your Holy Spirit that through his holy communion we may be nourished to eternal life. O Lord, all good things come from you. You have given us an abundance of good things. Make us wise and responsible in the use of all all your gifts, that through them we may honor you and support the work of your kingdom here and on earth. Into your hands, O Lord, God Almighty, we place all those for whom we have prayed, even our very selves, trusting in your mercy, we place this into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, when we look at creation, we should always turn to the Creator and trust in Him. We sing the closing hymn. 